Hi friends, it's Sarah from rufflesandrainboots.com and I was asked a great question about monogram design in XCS 2.0 for engravings, for bag tags, for ornaments or whatever. This will move quickly, but you can go to your YouTube settings and slow it down there. So I am going to show you how to create all of these and one more little text thing. And if you'd like to make it with me, just stick around. Okay, so I created all of these for a reader who asked me this and I thought I'll just record how I created them. So I always have a working file, which means that's my design file. I'm going to start by telling you the easiest way for you to make a monogram is to find a monogram font. However, it is pretty limiting because they are pre-created um, SVGs most of the time. There is also a website monogram something.com. You can join it. It's free, but you do have to have an account. So you just drag in each of the individual letters and you're just going to vertically or horizontally align or vertically align them. And then you can horizontally distribute them. Um, I'm actually going to move these quite a bit over and then I'll do that because I think it's, it looks a little bit better when it's tighter. I'm going to group those together and that is done. So you would unite or whatever to your design. You can cut that, you can engrave that, you can score that. So that's the first one. And it's always type in monogram font on font bundles or whatever. I'll link my fonts that I'm using below. The second one is also a ridiculously easy one. You can come into what XCS offers for vectors and just use one of these, or you can drag and drop an SVG Laurel from designers like me and just add a letter. That right there, I tell you, I made for my Xtool P2 review. I wanted to make some felt uh, products and I, I, I used one very similar to this. It was a big hit, that right there, is done. We're just going to horizontally align it and size it to whatever project. Be sure you group all these things together. It's a little easier to take care of. So I hit T on my keyboard, which is a short to get to my text. And now I'm just going to choose a font. So Victoria is a pretty wide font. I love this font. I use it a lot, but it does require some manipulation. I'm going to come over here, unlock the aspect ratio, and it allows me to size it horizontally and vertically. Now, I like that. We're going to just take a sliver of this A away. So this design is, um, some people love it, some people hate it. I, just, I can't decide for you. So I'm gonna show you both of them, including the break here at the end. So I'm gonna go into this new feature, edit nodes. We want to only highlight the ones we want to move. So I'm just gonna highlight everything together, hit hold shift and the up arrow, which will move every time the up arrow moves, 10 pixels will go up. So that's how you make quick adjustments that are pretty big. All right, now using that, we can actually now put a name on the inside. So I'm going to use a very popular font called I Love Glitter because it's really easy to add your swashes, any leaders or trails. You can see them here. We have something on the beginning and something on the end. Every MacBook, every Microsoft uh, computer has a font manager. So in Mac, it's called Fontbook. I think it's font manager in Windows. There's also a word mark. You can go online and look at all your fonts, but you're just going to bring up the font. You're going to scroll down to these swashes, leaders and trails, extras. There's two ways. You can see I can copy it here or I can use the left square bracket. So I can just copy and paste by hitting double tap inside this text box, or I can hit the right square bracket for this one. There you go. We do have to weld this kind of text together. Anything that's joined, once it's welded together, we're done. There you go. Super simple if we have these easy tools that we now have our at our disposal. So I don't like that spacing, so I'm just gonna drop this down again. We do wanna group it so it all moves as one piece and one size. And then we're done with that one. Isn't this easy? Let me know in the comment below which one's going to be your favorite monogram. All right. Also, again, we're going to use what's at our disposal. These work really well for monograms, a wreath, a laurel, whatever. This is great in the holiday season. We're going to do a family name and we're going to say the blank family. So I'm going to use a 
what's called a font set. So it usually has a couple different or a few different fonts in it. For the script, I'm gonna be sure to weld that together. I'm gonna to put it on a different layer so you can see it. And I'm gonna size that to my actual wreath. Next up, I'm gonna hit T as a shortcut on my computer, type in the same font name and choose one of the sans serif ones. So we're gonna combine these two because the font maker did all of the work in making sure that they were a good pairing. I'm gonna change this one to engrave as well so you can see it. And now, <clears throat> excuse me, any changes we make to this with regard to the aspect ratio or anything, we always wanna copy and paste from there so that those look the exact same. Now we're just gonna adjust. We always wanna make sure the family name and the wreath or the central piece are centered. Everything else doesn't matter. You can move it around, just make sure the spacing between the top and bottom is the same but you can move anything around. Once you have it all moved, I personally always group all of the text together and then group the entire design together. That allows me to manipulate it easy later. All right, a really fun one here because you can use absolutely any font. These are great for cake toppers. These are great for monogram um, if you wanna do a computer like the outside of a MacBook. So I'm going to choose a very frilly font called Amistery Script. This one may be free. I actually don't remember if this is free. I'll try and put all the fonts that I'm using down below in the section so you can see if you want them. All right, so I'm just gonna grab a flower or a sprig of something. I don't know, you could put a fruit on there, I suppose. Now, I don't like the way that's pointed, so I'm going to actually come over to the uh, mirror and I'm gonna reflect it horizontally. I'm gonna turn it using the curve tool and that's too busy. I'm going to do two way I'm going to show you two ways my way of removing a lot of nodes is the same as what we did with the a up here create a rectangle highlight both hit combine subtract it's gone however with the new node management tool let me zoom in because this is insane there are a thousand circles here I am not going to go one by one I am not going to try and select them I'm not going to do that I'm just going to go and do a rectangle now you can do it okay i want to show you that however this is the quick and dirty way and efficiency earns money so okay i'm happy with that i'm going to actually put this into place copy and paste it so we have something a little bit more fancy i do want them to touch don't worry i see that little stick hanging out i promise you we're gonna fix it all right now you may not know but in xcs 2.0 we can lock things. So I'm gonna click on the S, I'm gonna go, see how it's highlighted up there? It says text, I'm gonna lock. Again, we don't wanna turn off the I, we wanna lock the S in place. And then I'm just going to do my handy trick of add a rectangle. So you should see it, I'm just gonna hit engrave and then subtract, look at that. Now we're gonna group or weld, actually, we're gonna unite those two together. I'm gonna unlock the text and then grab the whole thing and unite it together because that one's done. Bam. The next one is one of my, <coughs> excuse me, one of my favorite fonts to use is Cooper Black. These are really fun for kids. Great bag tags, great wall signs. Cooper Black. It's a standard font. You've seen it. It's easy to manipulate and it has a lot of surface area to work with. So it's really fun for things like sublimation as well. So I'm going to just grab something from, I think I used a soccer ball or basketball. Okay, down here, see the soccer ball? I'm just gonna grab that. We want an offset to this, so inside of XCS, we can just do an outline, turning off the inner outline, and then hitting okay. That gives us the circle. Now there's two parts, the soccer ball and our circle. So I'm just gonna put those back together. And we're gonna end up moving those as one piece. So I'm gonna group them together. I'm gonna change them so like yellow so you can see it. And then we're gonna put this in place and size it as one. We can make sure that, you know, even if we accidentally click off something, it always gets sized together. Now I'm gonna ungroup it. I'm gonna select the soccer ball, go to the left bottom menu, click on the vector. And again, we are not hiding it because that still allows us to manipulate. We are locking it in place. And you can hide it if you want, it doesn't matter. But now what we want is we want that circle that's behind it, which is this vector. So I'm gonna hit engrave so you can see, that's a big circle. We're gonna remove it from the M, exactly the way we've removed everything else. 
subtract. Now we can unlock um, the soccer ball and change that to black. And now we have a monogram. We can group this together. And you would want to unite that again before you do any of your work, but now it moves all as one. Here's another one that's really popular. When you find a font that you love, that you can offer your customers or just make somebody, I'm going to use Breakfast Pastry. This designer is one of my favorites. Um, Breakfast Pastry is a font family as well, but I like the one that has the holes in it. So I'm going to change this to engrave so you can see how pretty this thing really is. Look at that. I'm going to unlock the aspect ratio just narrow it now because I've done that I want to copy this and not hit T and start over so I'm going to copy and paste this and then I can double click it and uh, change the letter and then change the size here we go change that and want to copy and paste that change the letter move it over and now you're just going to vertically align these and then you're going to distribute them horizontally and then group them all together to move as one and that one's done. <laughs> now this one, this last one is one of the most popular and a lot of people don't realize it's the easiest. It's also the one that you can mess up <laughs> the easiest. So Uncle Grump is one of my favorite fonts to design for kids. Write it down. It's so easy to use and it's really popular. So you can see I'm just creating the D. I didn't change anything. What we're going to do is we're going to literally make a cutout. Unlike the other one, like this one up here, that we made a sliver cut out and kept the majority of our letter, this one here, no, we're just going to chunk it right out. So I'm going to unlock this aspect ratio because I need it to be a little bit tighter. There we go. Now, if, again, you can change that to engrave so you can see it a little bit better, but we want to vertically align that in the center. This looks really good when in the center, let me um, change this to engrave so you can see it, a different color, right click. Okay, so you can see that is what is going to be cut out completely. Highlight both. All we're going to do is combine and subtract. Now we have this. It's still going to move as one piece. I'm going to change... Um, or I'm going to hit text. I'm going to change it to the Uncle Grump font. This one, not that one. This one, also a font family, um, should be the same because it looks better like this as the same font, but we can manipulate it any way we want. So let me just right click and put that on something different and tell you about the aspect ratio. When we size this, it's not going to fit. It very rarely fits. It's going to look weird. Um, and you don't have to do any more cutting. Most of the time you can unlock the aspect ratio and just manipulate it slightly. Always align it to the left and then we can manipulate the right. So I'm just going to highlight both, align the left, take the aspect ratio portion and pull it out a little bit. And that's done. So you would want to group these together or unite if you're done. There you go. One last tip. This one I have had to explain a couple times via email, so I'm going to go ahead and just tell you here. So I'm just going to add text. Again, you can hit T on the keyboard for the shortcut or go to the menu at the left. And I'm just going to say the same name that we just did, hit engrave, and then you can change your font. doesn't matter what font you're in, okay? Just don't weld it, okay? If you don't weld it, you can still manipulate it. So do not weld and grab this little thing, move it up or down, and you'll see it will place it on a curve or inside a full circle. Isn't that cool? Now, why did that make a monogram? Okay, let me tell you. So if we repeat this, um, again, we can make it up, we can make it down, we can put it on a cup, we can put it on a Stanley topper, doesn't matter. But if we repeat this and we don't weld it, we can still manipulate it. So we can manipulate the text, we can mani manipulate the ratio, we can manipulate the curvature, we can do everything we want. So if we put it like on the same circular path, the same size circular path, you can see it'll show you the, these paths, we can stick a basketball or a soccer ball or something in the middle, a team name or number, and that's it. All right, so that is it for me today. If you found this helpful, please like it, share the video, and subscribe. I really appreciate you being here with me. Follow along for more crafty fun.